I read that this was uh, meant to be your first film. Mm -hmm. This is what you tried to get funding for a few years ago before Mustang uh, and wasn't able to come together until after that. So I'm curious about where your interest in this period uh, and the origin for this story first started. 2005. Uh, there was two events that triggered uh, the first Park of Kings, and the first one was a uh, private, and the second one a historical event. Uh, I was refused the French nationality for the second time, and I had been living in France ever since I was six months, and uh, I had my roots sprawled there, and my life set there, and it was, uh, you know, it's like a very small private issue, but it's like what people today must feel like when the that guy is taken away from, from people. It's just, uh, it's the country that you love that rejects you and uh, and that treats you as a foreigner, though like you would be foreigners uh, in other places and uh, it's for you your home. Uh, so, so that was a bit the issue. And then a few months later, there was uh, three weeks of uh, riots in France and I could recognize uh, the anger that was triggering those events. So it was in France. It was really like um, a deep societal issue coming to the surface. Like we didn't know there was such a big issue, and all of a sudden, like I had a resonance with with what was going on. And even if I didn't feel like going to burn a police car or do anything like that, I, I really, really intimately recognized the combustible. So for months, I read and spoke about riots just to understand. Uh, what was, uh, in stake, at stake, and I eventually came across the LA riots. And for me, then, there was, while reading about the LA riots, there was something about a real uh, huge resonance and a, and a shock, really. For, it, for me, it was the story which embodied everything that I wanted to say, and I had a, an enormous amount of empathy, and, and I could uh, feel the, uh, the outline of the film which exists today. So I came. A few months later, I, I said my things together, and I came to Los Angeles for the first time. Okay. And I spent a month in South Central, and also like seeing all the television archives and and doing the the first bit of research. And every single day uh, confirmed uh, my initial intuition. And from then on, I spent years, but years, like researching in South Central and uh, writing the script. And the whole first push of Kings took about. Bit more than five years, and eventually it completely stalled in 2012. I had written a uh, treatment of Mustang just before uh, that period, and uh, and yeah, it was just about you know like I had like versions and versions and versions of the script, and I eventually like, put it in the box, which looked like a baby coffin. It was awful. I really had the impression I was you know, yeah. and then. Uh, uh, I wrote Mustang in the beginning as an evil master plan to levy kings after. And okay. then I completely dived into Mustang and, you know, with head over feet exactly as I am for kings. But um, it started like that. And then Mustang, uh, the evil master plan worked. Mm -hmm. And Mustang took us to back to Los Angeles. And it's a funny thing, because if, if a story of that amount of resonance happened on the North Pole or whatever, I would have gone there. But the fact that it brought us to Los Angeles, for me, it, it was like layers and layers and layers of uh, different uh, times and stories with the city. So I had spent like all that time in South Central, all the time with gangs and the police and uh, going in every little hole in the city and, and you know, like behind each uh, element of the film, there's either the behind Millie's family, there's a real family, there's like fragmentary reflections of real life people or real life situations or small details and um, so it was on top of all of that we were coming back and, and uh, meeting actors and producers and agents and and so it allowed Kings to happen okay finally yeah that's <laughs> so that's been gestating over a decade yeah then. yeah uh -huh. wow. 11 years yeah. wow yeah uh, and then at the point Halle, I'm guessing that Halle Berry came on board yes well uh, it was the uh, a discussion with her who triggered the film but in production uh, I was meeting actors after Mustang but really the meeting with Hollywood uh, 
almost like just to meet and uh, for me it's always very difficult because you know you meet actors they're great and they're funny and, and you get attached to them and it's like going to visit a litter of kittens you know like, yeah, you're like yeah. okay don't take them all back home and don't propose a party to everyone and and with her I, I spoke about Millie's character and uh, and that was it and then it grew like a wildfire from there yeah yeah I remember when that was first announced that she was attached it moved quite quickly yeah uh, so Millie is based and mo like all of is it safe to say all of the characters are based on uh, somebody real oh, yeah, that you but met yes but then the st their storylines are not for instance uh, uh, for example the, the person who was selling the seven up cakes and who did that for a business was somebody else okay. or like the storyline during the riots of Millie was not that at all so uh, but there was behind Millie there's like a woman who took care of that many children and who I never saw her figure like I never saw her without two babies like I have uh, dozens of pictures of her she's always with a grape of, of babies and then there's a real boy behind Jesse who was that I met when he was 12 years old with Millie the very first time and he was extremely gracious and intelligent and you you know you could project on him like a great bright future and he was killed when he was 17 and there was something above him like there was something of a uh, you felt that there was um, a threat on him like his mother and grandmother didn't allow him to go out in the street like never and so he 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 was homeschooled and so he just like went to his uh, uh, place like uh, three times a, a week just to give the homeschooling uh, exercises and papers like that and eventually he got killed even with all the precautions wow. it was just almost like a curse on him and I think like when you write something most of the time you know you you do feel things that are in a society like I know for Mustang it was written in 2012 before what happened in 2013 okay. and so I was thinking after reading it uh, yeah I think I pushed a bit too far like what, what's happening in the story and then a year later like there's so many resonances like the en internet being for, uh, the cut uh, at some points and you know, like moments of, of the uh, elements of, of freedom which are taken away from people which really resonated with the content of the film or even a lot of more discussions about more in Turkey moral values in Turkey which resonated between the film and what happened after writing the script and I think that Jesse I, I knew like there was something about uh, like as if uh, the perspective was blocked or you know like uh, as for me the character of Jesse is the absolute tragic hero he's the one who would have gone to college who's pacifying everybody and who eventually becomes a killer so there's something yeah. in him which is like really a, a, a downfall but I, I had I think I sent something about Jesse uh, about Ryan the boy who inspired Jesse yeah but he's who the film is dedicated yes, to. yes but it, it was a bit uh, di it was different like I never like I never imagined he, he could have been killed and for years after that he's also like with Millie uh, this maybe the second person I photographed the most and for years I thought, okay, so I'm, uh, the whole purpose of these years in South Central were about taking pictures of this boy and giving him to his family uh, when he died. Wow. That's well, depressing, but uh, yeah, I'm so tragic. Sorry. It's tragic, yeah. yeah. It is. But um, it's, it's true, like in South Central, you have associations of mother who have lost their child. Like It's a bit like in time of t tyranny, you know, like when mothers have the portraits of their kids or. Is yeah. it, it's not a normal thing in the, you know, in a society. It's not a normal no, process, no, 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 no,
why or yeah. uh, but then the thing is never anyone who saw the process up close like no one in South Central ever questioned you know in the beginning if they said why and they just explained and they see you come and give all your time and be there with two cameras and put, you know like people completely respected that so it always came from people who were bits from a distance and who didn't know much about um, what's inside the film and the process of uh, what brought this film and then uh, it's not only that it's also because the film is a uh, what it is. It's like not a classical Hollywood grammar and people have expectations when they see Daniel Craig they have the impression they're going to see James Bond or yeah, South yeah. Central and those have been written as well. Well, the film, each time you have the impression it's going to turn right, it turns left, you know, it does that. And then there's something even formally, like in terms of drama, we, we mix a tragedy with a, with lighter tones and, and that's really, for me, that's something which was very obvious in the discussions that I had with people. It was, uh, uh, you, you felt it, like a little smile after a while on people's faces, and then there's all those stories, like all the neighborhood stories of that one guy who uh, stole the entire content of a, of a tire shop, and who lived among tires for years, and, and you know, all those things that make people laugh and when they call, recall about the rights. So, so there was some kind of madness, and for some people it was a bit of a party, and, and then it's also like there's other things, like people never told it to their children, like the, the kids who, Ryan didn't know about the riots, so his homeschooling thing was on Florence and Normandy, like the epicenter of, of where it happened, yeah. of where it happened, like the, the place where he, the little school where he, he went, he to so uh, there's like that thing of a uh, bit humiliation, people don't say it, but the humor was part of the story. So for me, there was it was really like as if we were looking at a fire, and from one angle you can see the loss and destruction and damage and heartbreak that, that there is to it, and for the kids, they, they look at it as if they were looking at a fire inside the chimney, and it's beautiful, and it's a spectacle, and they're having fun. And that was so much present in the riots that I had to do that. For me, the truth, of these events are, are that, the, the tones. So there's that, and then formally, like, you know, I'm, I'm literally using symbolism to, <laughs> to say, okay, Natasha's death has had an impact on the lithosphere of the city, like it had, and Rodney King as well, it, it's almost the effect of a volcano on, on Los Angeles. So once you, like visually, you have like those shots which say it, I really wanted you know, to express it and say, no, this is very toxic, now we're getting used to it because there's like all these videos coming in one after the other, but guys, like one single video made the entire city crazy. So right. it's just like, just to, Yeah, I thought the, know, way, the like way you used it was like, yeah. it became part of the smog infecting the city yeah, like yeah. overhead. Yeah. Um, are you worried though with the lighter tone that people might um, see kings as not, engaging directly with kind of the terror of what happened during the riots the what the the, 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 like the terror and kind of the overwhelming fear some residents felt but by kind of looking at it from that angle uh, well it's not that angle because you have like the, the storyline of Jesse which is the main storyline of the story is a complete tragedy and and so you go from like him, it's not even drama. Like it's absolute tragedy. Yeah. So you go from absolute dark to moments which are lighter, and then it comes even like later in the story, uh, and not. And plus, it's not like ha ha he he laughter. It's the uh, you know like absurd. How did we get into this situation? Yeah. Uh, like self pity and laughter. Right. Yeah. And it becomes like you said the only. It's actually the only crime, the violent. It's only violent murder besides Latasha Harlan's in the beginning that we see happen within the film. That is it. The only violent moment, yes. Yeah. Be besides well, the opening, obviously. Yeah, but, well, uh, but we, we do the uh, we do see that, the, I mean, the violence, people being I mean, pulled out of right, their right, cars, right. and we see it on, in the archives LAPD, as well. So you want to talk about like, the LAPD? Yeah, yeah. the the represent well, they seem the, the, they seem to get um, a fair shot at representation. I guess it feels like like. The way that they react to how they need to uh, correct a situation seems reasonable, given it within the context of the film. And I was just curious about, like, because there's a, 
the specifically like the monologue with the the cop that's uh -huh. pointing a gun at yeah. Halle Berry and Daniel Craig, uh, who has mistaken them for looters. But but if you can talk about overall the representation, how, yeah, how you approach the representations of the LAPD. Uh, well, the LAPD for for them as for many other people, it was definitely not a day of glory, and they really know. Uh, they know it. And the other thing with uh, the LAPD is that they, with me, they have been completely transparent. Like they have allowed me to see everything, talk with whoever I wanted to talk, and help me a lot during the research. And then there is something about what I have seen them from the LAPD is extremely, um, uh, how do you say, they, they are engaged into self criticism and, and, and progress. Yeah. So there's really a uh, a will of, uh, you know, like for them, they're still more to fight about the Ronnie King tape, and it's a disaster, and and so it's true that like the representation that they have in the film is not like glorious, but it's definitely not like we're talking about two events: the Ronnie King beating, and then the the moment when they disengaged from the initial uh, confrontation between the crowd and the police, yeah. and that's what starts a riot. But then, uh, like, for, for riots, you, like, it's literally there's a, almost always the same path. You need a vacancy of power if it, to topple the wave over, or it doesn't. Like, the fact that the police withdrew mm -hmm. in, in front of everyone, the scene with Billy, where, well, that was it. After that, people ran into the stores and, and the riot had started. So it's two events which are not so glorious. And the other scenes, like there is uh, the scene when um, Nicole gets into the police car and the, the one with the monologue, which are more like slightly on the other register. It's, uh, those are really a bit more like literal fiction. Uh, you know, like it's not like the most uh, documentary moments right. or but, yeah, um, very in a tone which is, uh, uh, and, and to me, uh, uh, for those two moments, they're very, like I, I consider them really as uh, like humans, like the you know, like I, I mean, uh, the fact of uh, I'm not thinking what what a police officer is saying right now. It's like what are you thinking as a human being when you have somebody in a car or you're, you know, like you're trying to do your job and this and this is going on. And so it's more a perspective which is uh, just pr a simple projection of uh, what a character would do in a situation like this one. Um, are, I guess I'm, do you feel that uh, like current residents of South Central will be, react warmly towards the portrayal in Cadiz? The portrayal of, of South of, Central? Of, of South Central and, you know, specifically that, that week, yeah. uh, that period in time. Uh, well, we, we haven't, we've just finished the film, so we have to go back to uh, Los Angeles for that. And I do, I do feel that the film is extremely uh, loving in terms of, uh, of like the look, which is on South Central, is yeah, extremely yeah. like full of uh, warmth. And uh, then the thing that I'm thinking is that I used to show films at friends in South Central, and like the reactions to anything slightly not uh, uh, Hollywood format with. Why are we watching this? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like I remember showing Paul Greengrass's Bloody Sunday okay. to a very close friend who's like an ancient gang member, and and I, I don't know. We were discussing about King, and I wanted to show him a film done in a community like, uh, uh, like the like Bloody Sunday, and he just hated it. He hated every single minute of it, and it was in black and white, and he was bored. And so I'm thinking, okay, this like so off. Format, you know, like it's so much not the uh, typical Hollywood grammar that I, that in those terms, I think I, I might have a reaction like, what is it? But then uh, we'll see, we'll see how people, yeah. because it's, it, I think it's, uh, plus there's a lot of things from them, literally. Uh, so let's see how. Um, I, I guess I'm also curious about um, the character of Obi, uh -huh. uh, Daniel Craig, and how. Like, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, his whiteness is yeah. important to 
the dynamic, I think. And I guess I was just curious about why, why him in this place, in this time? Yeah, well there were uh, a few different reasons. First of all, there is, I, I had seen this, this one person while patrolling with the LAPD. Like you get looks in South Central which are like, people look at the police car that they had smelled dog shit, like, you know, like. And then uh, there was this one uh, white guy who was really, really pissed off and who pestered about it very openly. So he's a mixture of like this person and images that I have of, uh, uh, but for me, like, only there's something on the contrary, like, he doesn't ever take into account any racial dynamic, ever, like, even uh, the night of the riots, uh, it's as if, like, he really just doesn't care, like, and he's obviously European, he's obviously, like, not, like, there's something about the separation and races in the U.S., which is proper to the U.S., so you, if you're an outsider, you're really an outsider. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're not, like, you're not in that dynamic, so he's not in that dynamic. But for everybody else, like, if his reasons to be there is because the rent is low and uh, he just wants to be, like, away from, you know, like, and right, if that's his purpose, well, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's nothing, like, people say that he's the only one guy in the neighborhood, but for him it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not an issue. Yeah. And it's, actually, it's never an issue between any one of the characters of the film. It just plays with uh, uh, the... Each time there's a contact with... After Sun Jae uh, kills Natasha with a Korean shopping girl, like the Sun Jae dynamic starts, and like everybody's talking about that. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only place where it plays, like a conflict between... Do you, do you think the absence of kind of discussing diegetically between the characters in the film, uh, their different racial backgrounds, do you think that that might uh, bring charges of like whitewashing in, in the reception to King? As in, because Daniel Craig's whiteness isn't, isn't directly addressed as within the context of the film. Yeah, well, he's just like, the the only fact that we always say the only white guy in the neighborhood, like that's his label, yeah. says, okay guys, we have an Afro-American neighborhood, which is like not an obvious uh, uh, given for, you know, it, True, yeah. for people in Europe, <laughs> or like, but it, like it says a ghetto, ghettoization, but how, how would it be addressed more than the, uh, uh, yeah, no, whitewashing. Like you would have to explain to me. Uh, it's, <laughs> like, it's more of a, a meaning of like um, kind of glossing over the reality of the situation, or maybe with some discomfort with it. As in, realistically, during that time, people would have been more uh, vitriolic, vitriolic towards him, at, like in the neighborhood, because. Like, like, there's the sequence where he's watching Millie's kids, and he's uh, watching the footage where Reginald Denny is uh, being battered, uh, and his is the only character reaction shot, which I thought was kind of interesting to that. But beyond that, uh, wouldn't like I felt like it would have been dangerous for him to be out in the streets at all. It, like during uh -huh. while that's going on, but so it, as, as far as whitewashing goes, like in a sense of certain complexities not being directly addressed according to his whiteness, I guess is what I was trying to get at. But okay, um, well, it's a matter of, uh, of, of choice, you know, like. Uh, just like it's it's when also people can tell you why is the script not going in that direction or because it's not it's uh but whitewashing I still don't really yeah uh, you know it's as if you were telling me you're missing this this and this scene as well or uh, yeah I guess it, I guess it more do you of feel, it no do you feel like that or you think people are going to feel like that. Is it something I, you you it w which it disturbs you and you really feel it? It doesn't disturb me as an, I'm a white person. It's not that kings didn't disturb me. Uh, 
my partner grew up in South Central uh, and, and was around there during that period. But I think it was more of a sense of there wasn't yeah. enough uh, blackness about it, I guess, is the conversation I was having ahead of time. But uh, disturbing, no, because I can get the sense that it's a very well-intentioned film. Um, and it, it is warm. And I did get the sense that you were trying to avoid... Your, your focus was the humanity of these people in this place. And yeah, I get that. It's really like a very, the take on the, on the story is uh, very specific. Like it's a very personal look at the Los Angeles riot. And for me, it's also like through the filter of a, a, it's almost a poetical perception or redescription yeah, yeah, of the yeah. So on a film like this and on a subject, of that gravity, I think you, you need to have literally crisscrossing of different films made and on anything which is uh, in, like generating, which is first of all a, a consequence of like really big traumatic uh, civilizational issues like the Los Angeles riots are. Uh, we should have films on these issues every year. I agree. Like, no, I agree. Every I agree. Year. Mm -hmm. Until, because the other thing is, it's a very taboo story. It is, yeah. So, it is so that it is. It's but the be thing is, today there's also something that, for example, I see people uh, like on social media, friends from South Central, who are reacting very, very strongly to uh, like what's happening with the white. Like there's a counter uh, effect to like people are saying these whites are doing this. Again. Like you see also something being, uh, uh, you know, like. It's not exactly what was before the alliance, but there's like this, a racial dynamic which is really, really not great, which is coming up right, right now. Right, right, and that needs to and be you, discussed. Yeah, and you that, can sense yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it's really something like, for example, during the Second World War with the Shoah, there's so many films treating that, and it's so important to sustain the, the memory of it. Yeah, and be reminded. Yeah, and never forget. All the time. For sure. And, but also because when you don't you can it's so easy to go back in it like it's yeah. so easy to like you have the ferments in europe you have like so it's very 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 important it is important and and your yeah. film is important because but, it's going to but it's generate important. conversations yeah. and yeah but yeah. you should have like as many films i think for example on slavery on racial issues everything there should be 10 films a year i agree you know I so agree. that's it this one is a like one poetical punk uh, <laughs> mad thing, you know. I agree. It's just you know, my, like my personal concern when seeing films is that sometimes they will get they, they'll disappear under the potential taboo and controversy of it, you know, which yeah, I would then, not want yeah. to see happen. But then, okay, if that happens as well, which is likely, it's there's also something else. Like right now. It's very important not to mistake the problem. There's like 200 people who have been walking with torches in their hands just a few weeks ago. So it's important to distinguish like who's on whose side. You know, I agree. Like, I definitely agree. Also. All right. Well, thank you for taking thank the time you. to meet me. <laughs>